Dutch Sheets is the head of Christ for All Nations, located in Oak Cliff, Texas, and is one of the leaders of the new Atostatic Reformation. That day, I'm going to talk to you about the heavens opening for a few minutes, and actually I'm going to talk about portals and gates. There's, um, there's been a lot of talk in certain circles of the body of Christ lately about portals. Uh, to me, that's a good, uh, it's a good word to use because a portal is an entry point. Uh, I looked it up in the dictionary a while ago on my phone. <laughs> It said a portal is a grand and imposing entrance. It's a connecting, it's, it's an access point into something. So it's good, I think it's okay to talk about when the heavens open and we have access, and the heavens and earth, the heaven, heaven and the earth connects as a portal. I think probably the biblical word for it is a gate. Yeah. When Jacob has it, had his encounter with the Lord in Genesis 28, he woke up from that dream where he'd seen the angels ascending and descending and eventually the Lord came and talked to him and it changed his life forever. And he said, this is none, none other than the house of God and the gate of heaven. He'd stepped, he'd, he'd come to a portal, a place where God before had met with Abraham. Abraham built an altar there. It became a very special place to the Lord, a holy place, a sanctified, set apart place. And though Jacob didn't know when he got there, he fell asleep under a portal and opened heaven. And he said, wow, man, I had Holy Ghost dreams all night. And he did. His destiny was, told, was given to him. The Lord told him his future and gave him the same promises he'd given his grandfather Abraham when he came to that gate. The word portal is used in witchcraft and the New Age movement. Just recently, the word is being used in the new Atostatic Reformation. The truth is that we are blessed and have access to heaven when we accept Jesus as our Savior, repent and have a relationship with Him, not because of where we are on the earth at a certain time. There are windows all over this nation that are open. Portals, gates. Waiting for the Lord to show or waiting for someone to, to, to act on it so the Lord can come and do what he wants to do. You can have an open heaven, a gate, a portal. You can, it can be as, as small as just over you. You can go into your secret place and you can get with the Lord and you begin to worship and you just find yourself with a window over you. Or can come over gatherings. Where we're headed is that entire cities, yes. Yes. nations, are going to have windows open, yes. portals, gates in the heavens of the Spirit that are going to be open. Can there be a portal or gate as large as a country? The Bible states in Matthew 7 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. Small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. John Kilpatrick, who was the pastor, led the, was the leader of the Brownsville Revival from 1995 to 2000 in Brownsville, uh, Pensacola, Florida. And he told me a story. Of course, that whole place became an open heaven. It was just a portal. I mean, I'm serious. I don't know how long I've known the Lord all my life except for two rebellious years when I was 18, 19 years old. And I got there, and by the time the, the, the sermon was over and the song was being sung for the invitation, I just got out of my seat and went and got saved again. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, I know I'm saved, but Something's just drawing me to that altar. I just, God, just cleanse me, just wash me. You just, the presence of God. How I many of you, anybody here ever, ever go to that? I mean, it was just amazing. And he said one night, he was just watching people being ministered to by the Lord. Just, you know, sometimes they just get messy and people are all on the floor. You know, just kind of out in the spirit. And so I'm laying there shaking and uh, talking in tongues. And, and he just kind of oversee it and watch because once in a while it'd be something demonic. 
he'd have to go take care of and deliver somebody or make sure it was being done right, or whatever. Because he was just he was just the overseer. And he said, in this service, a lady began to scream. He said, I mean, it was a blood curdling. And she wouldn't stop. Well, I better go over here and see what's going on. And looked over there, and next to, standing, next to her husband, she was looking at him. And in Vietnam, he had had half of his hand blown off. And he said, before our eyes, the Lord was recreating the rest of that hand. So it looked like, it looked like a stitch. And we watched somebody stitch on a sewing machine. Finger. Go back, come back, make a little bigger. He said, we just were watching it. And I said, what'd you do, John? He said, I started screaming. Yeah! <laughs> I did. I went, ah! So I got there in time to see the last half of the creation. Half of a hand in these eyes. I saw the last half of, of that half. Nobody expecting it. Nobody asking for, hey, this guy's just there seeking God, getting right with God, pouring his heart out. And all of a sudden, just because they were in this open heaven, this portal, God would just show up and do stuff. Who is the man with the restored hand? Are there any before and after photos? Did any doctor verify the miracle? The answer is no. According to the Pensacola News Journal on November 20, 1997, there was no medical proof of any miraculous healings. Brownsville Assembly of God did not keep records of medical documentation of spontaneous healings, nor a file of names of people who say they were healed. After the revival was over in the year 2000, Brownsville Assembly of God fell into $11 million in debt as the attendance dropped from thousands to about 100 people. 1 John 4.1 states, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. The gates between heaven and earth were aligned 2,000 years ago when Christ Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven. He became the only gate whereby men might access the Father and eventually enter his kingdom. There is no other way to heaven.